At Yankee Stadium, there is a sign that says Armatron. If you've ever been there for a game, you might hear someone say, what's an Armatron? To answer that, we have to go back to 1927. Eugene Gluck is born in Romania, right there. Everyone calls him Mr. Gluck. He walked into a room, the room lights up. He, everybody knew something was special about him. Mr. Gluck was an exceptionally smart kid. He was a genius. He would read voraciously ancient Jewish books of wisdom. He's the wisest person I've ever met. He soaked up every bit of wisdom he could, which was good because he was going to need it. The year is 1942, and it is not a good time to be Jewish in Europe. His dreams would have to be put on hold. His whole family was brought here, and he was the only one to survive the first few hours. They made him dig. This gave him time to think, a lot. And one day he looked up and saw a young, powerful soldier. That is when he made a promise. I am going to survive this, and I'm going to show you how human beings are supposed to treat each other. And he survived. The war ended, he was free. And the first thing he did was fall in love with her, Jean. OK, Jean and Eugene, that's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1949, they get married and come to America. Whenever he spoke about her, his, his face would light up. They had empty pockets, couldn't speak English, and they didn't know how to bake. So they started a bakery. He was delivering bread all over Brooklyn, and Mrs. Gluck was off delivering their first child. She gave birth on one of their biggest, busiest day of the year without telling him she was going to the hospital. That's actually true, though. <laughs> As his family grew, so did his ambitions. He felt he had to move on from there. It's 1956. Mr. Gluck knows almost nothing about watches, so he decides to become a watchmaker. He wanted to make excellent watches that normal people could afford. He flies to Switzerland, learns everything he can, with the help of some engineers, starts making watches. Armatron is born. All he has to do now is sell them. Mr. Gluck is not a salesman. So he decides to become one. Whoever he speaks to, he makes you feel like, you know, you are the most important person in the world. Never, never went into his office without asking me about my kids first. Even just the hello was like an uplifting moment. Hanallah! He traveled the country going from city to city to city, taking orders from every jewelry store. Every night, he would call Jean and tell her the orders, and she would pack and ship them. They were an incredible team. Like everything else they did, this worked. They started hiring people. So I started out customer service. So I was told to go down to the basement and clean it up. They sold more watches, got an office, hired more people. I was like fresh out of high school. My father, my mom, a few brothers, uncles, cousins. At one time, we were 15 of us. He had never been a CEO before, and well, you know how this goes. He learned he had an incredible skill with numbers. You could show him a spreadsheet full of numbers, and he could spot the error in seconds. And then again, he had this fantastic mind. Then the 1970s happened. It felt like the future. Computers, men had been on the moon, and sideburns were everywhere. So Armatron got in on the future by creating one of the first LED watches. They sold millions. It was a big deal for Armatron. And that's when the disaster happened. All the watches stopped. As people started returning watches, Mr. Gluck knew there was only one thing to do. Pay back every penny. Despite it leading Armatron to the edge of bankruptcy. Then the 80s happened. Armatron bounced back to lead the way with new and improved digital watches. These ones worked. This is when things really exploded. Bugs Bunny, Garfield, Monopoly clock, so many colors, so many styles. This isn't even a clock. Just kidding, it is. Commercials, magazines, celebrity endorsements. This was the birth of the fashion watch. Armatron was back. From nothing to this. How did they do it? Well... Love. He made a promise a long time ago to love people because he knew what it was like to be hated. But what does love actually look like? Well, it looks like this, an L. This building used to be a square. It blocked his neighbor's sunrise. The neighbor complained, and Mr. Gluck said, we'll do whatever it takes to make it right. A million and a half dollars later, his building was smaller, but it was right. Peace which in Hebrew, Shalom, is, was so key to him. It was important to him that everyone feel valued. Promoting people from sweeping the floor to an executive. I worked my way from the ground floor all the way to the top. Keeping a business, a family business, instead of selling out to Wall Street. We feel like we are one family. Love looks like showing up. He was 90 years old. 
you still came to work every day. He said, retirement will kill you. These are the words people use to describe Mr. Gluck. Consider it adorable. Fair. A therapist. Friend. Guy views Mr. Gluck as a father. Fatherly. Definitely a, a father figure. A mentor. So to me, that was my father. His real superpower was making others feel valued. He just happened to make watches. And he loved to give. He loved to give to people. The perfect little vehicle for making people feel good about themselves. First time when we had the clock and the signage, I sat down in our seats and someone behind me said, what's an Armatron? It's a watch. It keeps time. It's a lifelong fulfillment of a promise. Little pieces of legacy worn on millions of wrists. This is the story of what one man did with his time. What will you do with yours?